Hello, friends, <laughs> and welcome to an all episode of All New Snap Judgments, the 24th episode of since our rebranding into the official podcast of Marvel Snap Zone. But actually, the 52nd episode that we have produced, which means this is our one year anniversary over here at Snap Judgments. And Woo-hoo. joining me today for that awesome, awesome milestone is my friend and yours, Aaron Glazer. Aaron, my friend, happy birthday to this wonderful project of yours that you have now spearheaded for over a calendar year. How does it feel? Thoughts, feelings, experiences, reflections. Mm-hmm. As one of our guests so kindly put it yesterday, well, you want her to be a content creator. (laughs) (laughs) As I was like, I have so much to do. I do. Some of those candles in the chat. (laughs) Sorry. But we are immensely (laughs) grateful to our loyal listeners and loyal viewers for sticking with us over the last year. Uh, but we have brought two very special guests, two long-time guests to join us this week. Aaron, which of our wonderful returning guests do you want to introduce first? Well, we have two great guests, but only one is my favorite person in an entire country. Welcome to Marvel Snap Zone's best creator, including me, including everyone else. It is then ouch (laughs) you said country we're not in the same country no you're my favorite person in all of france oh cool nice i'll take it uh dan real real quick if our loyal listeners and loyal viewers want to become your loyal listeners or loyal viewers where would they find you it's your birthday. I'm not even going to advertise my content. You just stay on Wait, this podcast. No. And instead of reading my <laughs> articles, you just listen to the previous one. Just get a marathon. Listen one year of Snap Judgment podcast. Oh, God, don't listen to the early episodes. Um, but importantly, then, um, beyond all of that, I, for our anniversary, tell us what the French drunk YouTube is so we can sub. The French drunk YouTube? You're YouTube where you speak in French drunk in the early mornings. Oh, no, I don't. I'm, I'm not drunk. I'm just very, oh. very not awake. Okay. <laughs> but you have to What's know the... I'm very not a morning person. It's called La Game du Matin, which literally oh, says the morning game. And that's just literally I wake up and I boot the game and I play and I play extremely bad because I'm completely stoned. <laughs> So because what we're going to do sleep, not because of actual illegal stuff. Yeah. So what do we're going to do it. is we're going to put that YouTube link in our show notes. So make sure you don't miss it because this is going to be my new favorite YouTube channel. <laughs> All right, Aaron, who is our second very special guest here? Our second favorite guest is the only person in the world, including my family. I let tell me what to do with my money. <laughs> it is our most featured wow. guest. We've got Savage Yeti. Hello again. Congrats on a year. That's uh, a pretty cool I did, superpower. I wanted to say that because it is a year, back in February, I think you guys had me as the creator of the week for like the first mm-hmm. week. And I don't know if I told you this, but me and my girlfriend were like running around the apartment and like cheering oh. because it was the first time that like someone had recognized my content Aww. and like said something about it. And so it was super exciting. I even told my parents about it and it was a big reason Aww. why I'm still making content now. So I want to say thank you to you guys. Congratulations on a year. And uh, yeah. Wait, so that content we propped, don't be like Den, actually prop yourself. Where can our people find you? <laughs> oh, absolutely. Uh, my YouTube channel, Savage Yeti Gaming dash Marvel Snap. And then on Twitter, Savage Yeti YT. I also have a TikTok uh, that feels weird to say still. And <laughs> um, what else do I have? I think, oh, Marvel Snap Zone. I'm, I need to get back on the videos. It's, uh, it's been a rough few weeks, but uh, I make videos on there. It's supposed to be weekly. Yeah. Yeti and Roy are taking turns getting sick. It's very, very fun for like all my friends. And I'm like, how are you? Like, I'm sick. And then two days later, I'm like, Eddie, how are you? He's like, I'm sick. Great. Then be careful. It's been real fun. I'm good. I definitely I'm just would not like, I not like okay. to have COVID again for a good long while, many a year in the future. But anyway, 
If you would cool. like to engage with us in a variety <laughs> of other social medias, we are on Twitter slash X slash Elon Musk's uh, hellscape at Snap Judge Cast, where you can see Glazer getting in debates with uh, X's own resident AI. We are, of course, on the Marvel Snap Zone Discord. The link to join is in the description of this episode on YouTube and your fra- excuse me, your friendly neighborhood pod catcher. Uh, so please go and join the best large Discord in all of Marvel Snap. Our email is snapjudgmentspodcast at gmail.com, where we now have kick spam going all the way back to a year. Thank you so much, Aaron, for bringing that into my <laughs> life. We are on uh, everyone's favorite extinct uh, social media animal, extinct, excuse me, extinct animals social media platform uh, at Snap Judgments with an E at tabletop.vip. And last, but definitely not least, is our YouTube channel, Aaron Glazer's Other Baby, besides this podcast in the Snap community. You can go and get daily, well, really six out of the seven days of the week, videos from Aaron at Snap Judgments Pod. Aaron, if our loyal listeners would become our loyal viewers of the YouTube, what would they find right now on the YouTube? So I lost my mind like two weeks ago and I decided every single episode should be a full show. So like every single episode has um, two to three decks along with like mini segments in between where I give like quick versions of Yeti's bundle reviews or like I reviewed Marvel's the movie in there or like pro tips from various players. And then at the end of that, we do a full shop guide where like I take you through my shop and like explain what I bought in every variant. So every single episode, it's like a daily TV show. And I don't know, but people seem to like it and it's going well. So check it out. It's actually awesome. Insane. It's literally nuts. I, I definitely agree with Yeti there. It is absolutely insane. Just like this week's brand new card. All right, folks. We have a card that was very controversial last week when we were t- going over the new cards this season. It is Gladiator, who is going to cost you a hot 6K tokens, which, if you're like us and learn from Yeti, is the most valuable currency <laughs> in Marvel Snap. All right, so what do you get for your 6K tokens? You get a 3 energy, 7 strength, on reveal. Add a card from your opponent's deck to their side of this location. If it has less power, destroy it. Friends, we'll start with Den. Wait, can I go first? Because I just want to say something. Sure. Um, Because, so... My wife literally just almost lit the house on fire. That's like no one can see my face, but my uh, co-host here. But my wife literally just almost hit, lit the house on fire. And that's what this card is. It's almost fire, but instead it's just the ash. All right, we can start with Den. Go ahead. Um, I, I, I had a lot of expectations for this card. And then they nerfed Shang-Chi. And I was like, did they nerf it because of Gladiator? Or is it just weird timing? And that's going to cost Gladiator a lot. And... Uh, I know I want to play with it, but I'm ready to be disappointed, I think, is my appreciation no. of the card. Like, I will go for it, but if I'm like, eh, the card is trash, I will tell myself, I told you so. <laughs> but I have a few ideas. Like, I think it can be good in junk. I think it can be good in other decks. Surfer, it's a tree cost. Let's be original here. <laughs> Yeti? Uh, I just think it's going to be terrible. I'm going to buy it because I have to, because I make videos. Um, but I can't think of a situation where I just am not playing Maximus. I think for a three, seven, the, the downside is really, the, the, really bad. There so, are a few decks that just shuts down on its own. It's just, are these decks worth <laughs> shutting down? So there's a few just, decks that shut down on its own at one in 12. It just. All it gives you is information. Like Yondu, it doesn't no. actually do anything except give you some information on a card you're You're a content can't draw. creator. You just pull Ella and you have a TikTok for a week. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, so I'm not sold on it. It's a poopy card. But so it's got three homes, I think, that could make it good. 
Um, home one, I think junk is reasonable. Like Den said, I think junk has real ch- a real chance of being good. Um, unfortunately, we will not know that before we buy the card. You'll be hearing this as Gladiators out, and you're just like, but even you won't know this because um, Annihilus comes out next week, right? So we can't know if Annihilus is good with this card until after, and that's frustrating. Um, I think it might be good in Destroy, so we will know that. Uh, actually, that's not true. I think it's terrible in Destroy. But what Vision play plays a lot of destroy, destroy and thinks it's good in Destroy, so I'm willing to like give someone with some expertise a pass there. Do we have and like Shang probably belongs destroy? in Destroy. Sorry, what then? I mean, do we have space for this in Destroy? So not Deadpool Destroy. It has. I think it has to be like the classic Destroy that would run like things like Sabretooth, and I think that like you can basically make this a um sort of more reliable Sabretooth. Wait, what does it do? And destroy. I don't understand. It, why, it destroys the card. It? Who cares? And then no, you can just eat a card. it, right? Like it kills a card, likely, and then like it's like a big Yandu there, and then you could just eat it with like venom, and then it's your null. I guess, but there's, uh, I don't know. Seems like a so lot look, look, look. of rolling the dice for destroying a card. Maybe. Yes. Yes, I agree completely. However. Again, I'm giving some credit to Vision, who does not play Deadpool Destroy, but constantly does really well with it. Um, and then the last place it might be good is Sebastian Shaw decks. Um, Sebastian Shaw's December Season Pass card. Whenever it gets power, permanent power from an outside source, well, from any source, it gets plus two on top of that. So you're going to be running a bunch of strength pumps in those decks. And if I'm running a bunch of pumps, making Gladiator a 9, 10, more power card seems like it probably makes it significantly better and i think that might be good but we won't know that for another like three weeks so it's got potential homes i just don't think two of those exist and like it just feels like a lot of work for like a three seven it's not like this is um werewolf by night that's like a 313 i'll do work for a 313 for a 37 for like slightly ahead of rate stats i don't really want to do all this work i mean are we really going to compare all the tree costs to Werewolf from now on? Because otherwise every card is going to suck. I mean, but that's how the game works, right? Like, once you have a best in slot, you have to be competing with the best in slot to be played. Well, but then that means Miss Marvel, we would have said it's a crappy card because we would have compared it to Loki. So, so they do very fundamentally different things. Loki is a build around deck while Ms. Marvel is a good stuff card. I think you can compare Ms. Marvel favorably to the other four drop that we like consider the good stuff for drop Darkhawk. And I think that's why it's so powerful. Yeah, I agree. But they why do we compare Gladiator to Werewolf? They don't because, do the same because thing. Because what at all. they both do is fundamentally put out a lot of power. Oh. Right? Like what they what they're ultimately doing is being the best like beat stick of their cost slot. Okay. I just I don't see a reason uh, to play this yeah. over just Polaris. Like I'd take the two power hit for mm-hmm. not pulling out their Magneto. Or what I don't know why <laughs> Magneto was the, the example I came up with. But... Polaris, yeah. It fits. <laughs> right? Yeah, to me to me I think if you're gonna play this because it's a tree seven, you're probably judging it wrong. Yeah. It needs to have like you need to see some disruption aspect to it. Otherwise indeed the card is not worth it. But like that's just their bottom card, right? Theoretically. Like, because they're not seeing every card. So unless you, you're doing this, like, four times, it's not hitting a card they would have seen. And when it True. loses, when it doesn't hit, it just loses you the game. That's very real. Can we get to zero cards? I don't know. Let's imagine, like, Dorcock is really popular. Do we play this? Because that's minus two. I mean... It's three nine. It, it, so it's not good in our Dorcock deck. It's not good in the Dorcock deck. It's yeah, good like, against Dorcock. It's okay against Darkhawk, except that, like, you pull Korg and they're happy. Right? Like, you pull, um, you pull, like, what are you hitting outside of Zabu in that deck that makes them sad? Like, they're losing, right? Is it base power? Wait, Darkhawk doesn't care about cards in their own deck. They care about cards in your deck. He doesn't pull a card from your deck. He doesn't do anything against your Darkhawk. Oh, yeah, I'm stupid. My bad. Yeah, he doesn't do anything. All right. Forget about me. I'm just a terrible guest. (laughs) You're not a terrible guest, Dan. But what's... Well, what I want to know, and we'll start with Yeti here, is how did Miss Marvel work out in practice? We had, uh, oh my god, why is my brain? Z-Money and Z-Money and, Z-Money. And, uh, 
and D Money on last week, and there was a lot of discussion about how busted uh, Miss Marvel it was in the couple of hours that folks had had to play with her. Yeti did everybody's favorite uh, Jersey City resident live up to the hype in your experience? Yeah, I feel like a lot of uh, creators were saying that they weren't excited for Miss Marvel and that it was not going to be good, and I did not understand that at all. I think she performed about where I thought she was going to be. 15 power for 4 cost is insane. 10 power for 4 cost is also insane. So I I like the ongoing cards, or ongoing decks that are coming out, and she's performing better, slightly better maybe than I thought she would, but it, it's about in that ballpark. I'm excited. Dan? Yeah, I don't understand why anyone would say the card wasn't going to be good. I mean, at best, it's Doctor Doom for 4. At worst, is everyone has to play ongoing cards in their deck. Well, anti ongoing cards in their deck. So and that's so what like, she did. She she brought lockdown to be a top three, top five deck, depending who you ask. She brought Enchantress and Rogue in, in almost a few Yeah. But she brought Enchantress and Rogue in almost every deck in the game. Mm-hmm. Like what else do you want from a card? Like if the cards are too strong, people are not happy because they say it's busted. And if the cards are perfectly balanced and fun to play with, they say they're not busted and it's a problem. Like what are we doing? <laughs> so I mean, it's the internet, so people just love to complain. But beyond that, um, remember that I polled 50 creators. Gladiator finished above Ms. Marvel. And, like, it's insane. Maybe maybe by the time people are hearing this, they're like, well, yeah, Gladiator's better, right? But I find it very hard to imagine that that's going to be the case. Yes. Gladiator kills Ms. Marvel, so that immediately makes it a better card, so... <laughs> Fair enough. Also, just side note here, if you guys want to open up your app and go to the videos tab, I have a video in-game about Ms. Marvel. That's true. That's really cool. You should definitely check that out, folks. Uh, Well-deserved, my friend. Uh, So I've been playing for rank neutral a lot of Ms. Marvel combo decks. So for me, she definitely uh, landed. I've enjoyed a lot of Living Tribunal Miss (laughs) Miss Marvel <laughs> onslaught decks that uh, have like brought a lot of joy to my soul that I got on the Snap Judgments YouTube channel. Uh, so there we go. All right, Glazer. Glazer wants to talk about the OTA. I am not going to read for our loyal listeners all the various changes that happened here because at this point it was just over a week ago or just under a week ago by the time you'll get a chance to listen to this. So, but the big, 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 there's two big changes that are worth talking about here. One is uh, Mobius, uh, who's been both reverted to his old text and slightly nerfed to three power. So he's now a three for three with the ongoing. Your cost can't be increased. Your opponent's cost can't be reduced. Uh, Let's start there. So, uh, Den, the restored... To a bit of his former glory, Mobius M. Mobius, what do you think? I tried it today. Uh, it's fine, but it's not oh, to include like it was in the past for sure. And the problem is, as a two cost, he was just play it and you'll probably be rewarded. As a three cost, he needs to actually impact the game. And he doesn't often enough. I mean, and the other big problem, I think, is now compared to Zabu. Before you played Mobius, they played Zabu. It was insane. Now they play Zabu, you play Mobius, and you're like, oh, shit. They already played their four cost, and my Mobius, like, prevented them from playing an extra one cost next turn, but the damage has already been done. So that's a big, big nerf to the card, and that probably is enough not to play it in every deck anymore, and maybe not to play it at all anymore. Yeti? Yeah, I think the problem with it at three costs is by turn three, you generally want to be doing what you what your deck wants to do, and playing a Mobius on turn three. J.A. is just, you're postponing trying to do what your deck is trying to do. And on turn two, it's very easy to just chuck out there, and um, 
Yeah, I just don't. Maybe he fits into certain decks. Maybe he could fit in a deck like Shuri, where you're starting what you want to do on turn four. But I tried it in Thanos, and you can greenstone into it, and that's not so bad. Yeah, but like, yeah. then you're it not just, greenstoning into like, Professor X. Yeah, and I feel like there's just other three drops I mean, that are You don't have more everything impactful. every single game. Yeah, but on turn one, you don't know if you're going to have Professor X, right? Like, I'd rather save for the game-winning play. Yes, but, I mean... I mean, you can... I, know, I tested it in Conquest, and once I knew it was good against my opponent, I was getting it out on two, and he was good. But, yeah, it's it's scarce now. It's You, you, you have to look for the situation. Before the situation, we're just like, hey, we're here. So I think it's only good in Conquest, which means you have to have special situations, right? Which means your deck has to be specifically built for it. Like, I don't think this is a ladder card, like, at all anymore. But I could see it, like, if we had sideboards, this would be broken. But as is, I think it's just, like, a firmly, like... Like, I think it was probably... This is wild, but I think it was probably better before. I think it was probably better as an odd reveal. Oof. I think I don't know if it was better, but I think it would have been more widely used as an honor reveal. Yeah, it had more homes because the two yeah. is so much easier to fit. Like the fifty percent increase in cost is that what percent that is? Getting yeah, yeah the fifty. Thank you. The fifty percent increase in cost is a lot, right? Like, there's no other way to put it. There's also yeah, one other card in a six turn game. Right, sorry. That's huge. Yeah. All right, that brings us to the big changes here. So the big ticket thing here is Shang-Chi. Uh, Sean has been reworked. Uh, he now uh, kills all of your opponent's 10 or more power uh, cards. I am actually going to break tradition here and start with Aaron. Uh, Aaron, what do you think about Shang-Chi and a variety of other sort of a handful of other cards that were sort of uh, changed in order to sort of match Shang-Chi, including She-Hulk, Jess Jones, Monster, to either dodge the new Shang-Chi or to be still hit by him. So what do you think, Glazer? I think they made the game worse, very bluntly. I think that like they underestimated severely how many things were balanced around nine power, not ten. And like now an early abomination is backbreaking, right? Um there's a deck I'm covering in a video that's now yesterday for um people watching. It's actually maybe the same day as this goes live. That's just like turn two uh sorry, Zabu, turn two rescue, turn three, Jessica Jones. And now that's 20 power that's unshangable, just chilling in a lane. Like, it's obnoxious how much was balanced around that 9 power. And it's similarly frustrating, which we all should have known from Elsa, how much more power, like, that extra power means when you get one higher and you're trying to compete with lower cost things. Because now, like, you have, um, like, a 5 and a 4, right? Like, and you're just like, alright, well, okay. Like, right, like, it's just the balancing becomes really hard to, like, compete with with smaller cards. And, like, now their nines are going over you and you've got, like, two four, um, two, two fours. And now you just, it's like, it just becomes a lot more work. And I think it's generally worse for the game. And I don't think anyone's bothered to break it yet, but I think it's breakable. Again? I agree. I mean, I, I was trying to find something else to say, but. There's not much else to say. Like, I don't think it broke the game, mm-hmm. but I'm pretty sure that like what people saw when they were like, oh, it's just a plus one, and what is actually happening in the game, which is now we can actually play power. Uh, and also we're back to being able to play for priority much, much more because now you just slam like Chavez and Alioth in the deck you fight for priority, and worst case, you slam Chavez, and there's no drawback to it. While before, if you didn't have your Alias, you needed to lose priority to protect yourself and stuff like that. Like, I feel like overall, like if we're looking at the interactions in the game, it reduced the amount of interactions, which I don't think is ever good. Like, you want to increase them. Yeti? 
I think that short term, you guys are right. And I think that it's going to be a little rough. But I think with OTAs and long term for the game, it gives them an extra power slot somewhere in between to play with and really adjust where the power level of cards lands. It gives them that extra nine power slot to, I don't know, slot in a specific ability that doesn't need to be shang chi but shouldn't be so weak at an eight power. So I think long term it gives them a little bit more to play with. But right now it is a little bit a little weird because we're so used to Shang Chi being as effective as he was to keep the, the game in balance. And I don't think they could anticipate how big of an impact it's going to be or it was going to be. So yeah, long term I think it's good. I, I also lost eight cubes yesterday. Um because my opponent played white tiger and two and then they and two tigers landed in the plus one location and i was like "Ooh, shang slam oh right that hasn't Sad happened days. to me yet but i'm sure tragic. it will just truly tragic like up there with so many of the things that have gone on in the world recently thank you glazers uh <laughs> inability to understand that <laughs> nine is less than nine now <laughs> um and so I built that heuristic up over a lot of games. Of I Snap. understand. And and I think it's one of these like, changes. I think Yeti is spot on here though. Like I think they probably should have realized in play de- like a development a year ago that 10 is a cleaner number to roll out to your players than nine is. And whatever like weird in metric that their math people were like, no, nine is actually this beautiful numerically correct number for all of these values. They're like, Oh wait, but also it's an arbitrary, like humans like even numbers and human li- like numbers like 10, like th- that should be what you make your marquee number. It's easier to remember. It's more intuitive. Um, and it's going to take some correction to get there, I would not be surprised if random like abomination becomes a uh, six ten, and then Hulk becomes a uh, you know six thirteen or something, right? Like these like tiny nickel and dime OTA changes that mean like literally nothing really except for readjusting to this reality. But like in by the time the second anniversary of all new snap judgments, all newer snap judgments or whatever <laughs> it's called, then. Uh, uncanny snap judgments uh is you know when that rolls around i think people won't care like i and that this is sort of one of those things that all that matters is that shang chi exists has a clear power and the game is designed around that power and i just think slowly over time it's going to shift towards that both for forward facing designs and when second dinner's math department remembers to update like abominations power uh, other thoughts about this before we move on I want to talk about one more OT8 card sure have y'all tried Doctor Strange yet because Doctor Strange is really good yeah it's really good like Doctor Strange is a 2-3 I've, I've been begging for that for literally like 5 months and I to the point where I stopped predicting it just because I figured they weren't going to do it because they were ignoring it for so long but like in the Phoenix deck, if you can fit Hulkbuster, um, like Doctor Strange on a um, Hulkbuster multiple man is wildly strong. Yes, Th- that's the way we should play Phoenix. It's much more fun that way. Yeah, yeah, and it's I like it's a backup plan, but it's one hell of a backup plan. Sorry, what I got, game? I got him from uh, I forget what location gives you a random card, but. I was playing a Phoenix Force deck earlier today and got him randomly, and it was fantastic. So, probably should throw him in the deck. Like, it's also nice because, like, now they have to change Ghost Spider again because I think he's pretty much better than Ghost Spider for all of the decks Ghost Spider goes in. Wow, we just play both. Wife. Yes. Yeah. Isn't it good to have two, though? Yeah, but Iron Fist is the other one. Yeah, but Iron Fist can't move to any lane. That's you fair. You can't move to any lane. Well, like, he only punches to the left, right? So he can never punch to the right. The punch card to the right, right? But so, Ghost but, Spider and Doctor Strange can, right? Yeah, but they have to be played in the lane, so it has to be a playable lane. Whereas Iron Fist can punch you into Sanctum Sanctorum and other nonsense. 
That's fair. I mean, I'm not saying that there's no use for, uh, but I think the sort of having more like I must get into this lane things that Doctor Strange and Doctor uh, uh, Doctor Ghost Spider, uh, Ghost Spider uh, Gwen Spider Gwen can do, I think, is just good for the move deck. I think the more targeted move there is, the better it is. So I want one more move buff. Anyone know what it is? Mm. Spider Man to three cost or two cost. No, it's already three cost. That's OP. Sp- Sp- Spider Man would be just busted. It's already <laughs> yeah. one of the better move cards. So uh, I want Cloak to be um to work like Space Stone. No set, no opponent. That's so good. Yep, and you can make it a two or three in compensation. <laughs> but I want Cloak to be single player. I mean, if you want Cloak to be single player, you can't be stronger than Doctor Strange. So you have to make it like max to two. Okay, great. Max. I would take that trade. I would lose the two power for the ability to like, because the reason I hate playing cloak is I'm like, well, I can do this, but if they do this, it totally nullifies. Like it's so annoying, right? No, you just have to play kingpin. Okay, well then I can't move anything there, so that's not better. Yeah, but they can't either, and they don't know that. Yeah, that's fair. Still, I'd much much rather just uh have a usable cloak. All right. I'm going to wrap up a discussion of the OTA and kick us with Glazer to our main topic. All right. I'm going to fly through this because we've done this a million times. We're doing the top 10 decks in Marvel Snap. Now with 100% more Savage Yeti, we have six decks we agreed upon as top 10. Not Yeti. He was sick yesterday. Um, But Dan and I agreed on as uh that will be top 10, which means we're arguing 12 decks for four spots. That will be seven through 10. For the rest, we're going to go through them as we rank them. This won't be visual on the slides as we talk for anyone watching on the Marvel Snap Zone YouTube, but it will be posted in the show notes and we will make sure to clarify as we go. Any questions before we begin the wild card round? Cool. Uh, the top 10 decks last time, just reading these out very quickly. Our number one deck last time we did this was Loki. Number two was Evolve Doom Wave. Number three was Move Alioth. Number four was Shuri, which apparently will never die. Number five was Discard. Number six was Galactus. Number seven was Lockjaw slash Evolve Lockjaw. Uh, number eight was Cerebro 5. Number nine was Patriot Brood Me, which we were ahead of the curve on. Um, and number 10 was Darkhawk Good Stuff. We did skip last month because the week we would have done this was the week we decided to interview some guy named Glenn Jones instead. So this is from two months ago. Cool. Well, we kind of did something similar with Glenn Jones. Yeah, that's fair. We did cards. We did cards instead of decks. Yeah. And right. he told us that Shuri was clearly top 10 considering every card in the Shuri deck was in the ranking. Yeah, he was. He so. kept being like, by the way, but what about Shuri? It's like, sir, can you nerf Shuri? All right, whatever. Uh, bonus, we are going to talk about uh, 18 decks today. Your job in the comments to this video is to tell us the best deck we didn't talk about. Tell us the best deck we didn't talk about, and we'll pick one and talk about it next week on the podcast while obviously giving you credit. Cool? Well, and we being me and Roy, we're not letting Yeti and Den take over this cast yet. Okay. Also, Den needs to sleep sometimes. One day, I mean, like, clearly, um, I was gonna say I'm fine, but I don't even think I can believe it at this point, so I'm just, um, <laughs> all right, our wild card decks, which we will be taking one by one, I'm just gonna read them quickly and then we'll just get to the first one. Uh, I'm gonna brag when we talk about bounce, just so everyone mentally prepare yourself. One bounce, two cerebro, five, three classic discard, four galactus. 5 Junk, 6 Hella Jaw, 7 Hella Tribunal, 8 Move, which is like Move Alley Off, but there's enough versions now, 9 Sand Ramp, 10 Sarah Control, 11 Sarah Surfer, and 12 Thanos, and that's Thanos Control, because that's all the Thanos that matters right now. <laughs> deck 1 is the Darkhawk Bounce deck that is taking the meta by storm, because KM made a video about it, two weeks after I featured it on my channel. That's my bragging, just in case we're missing that part. That's a good brag. I, I th- right, like, he's like, this is the best deck. I'm like, sir, sir, we already did this. Thanks. All right. Um, It is the version that runs basically, I mean, it's Bounce with Darkhawk, and it runs Shadow King and Werewolf by Night. Like, that's the basic gist of the deck, right? Like, it runs either Iceman or Spider-Ham as extra control, 
It runs Nico if you have Nico for cards, but Nico's not terribly important. And it basically wants to play Korg and Black Widow multiple times, and then Darkrock and Werewolf as power cards to win the game. Let's talk quickly about this deck. Dan? I think this deck would be top five if Lockdown wasn't. Okay. I think that's a good point. I, I, I think this deck has a lot of merit, and it's probably one of the better decks in the game. But it just shows you that even some of the better decks in the game, when their counter is almost 10% of the game, you actually lose. So I do think it is, while it's not positive into Lockdown, it is quite positive into Loki, which has a lot to go for. it. I don't understand. How is it positive into Loki when you share, like, five cards with them? So because and you give them Shadow King for your werewolf? Because most, well, they got to pick the right lane, right? But most of what they no, get... They just got to pick priority. Yeah, I mean... Which they will, because, I mean, look at your cards. I mean, your cards have, like... Yeah, I guess that's possible. I, I haven't had that problem. I've been winning that matchup fairly consistently. Okay. Um, and so have Cam and the person who made it, who kept winning Infinity Conquest against Loki. Um, the basic idea is, like... A, you're stopping them from seeing their stuff nearly as often, so Loki struggles with consistency at that point. And B, unless they get, like, multiple of your good cards, they can get Werewolf too late to do anything. Um, They can get Darkhawk without the other things, and if they don't get Werewolf or Darkhawk, they're just getting a bunch of crap that doesn't do anything for them. At the end of the game. I I really like this deck. Like, I'm... I've been a, a bounce lover from the very first day. I mean, I was playing it even before Series 5 were a thing. Yeti? I prepped today to come in and say that bounce was terrible. And then <laughs> I decided to play bounce all day. And uh, I think this deserves to be in like the top three or four decks. I think it's Whoa. an insane deck. However, then it is right that because it struggles against some of the other decks in the meta, um, I think it could be a little bit lower. But as far as like its strength as a deck, like in a vacuum, not considering the other meta decks, just how good it is, I think it's is a really good deck. Um All right. but yeah, lockdown makes it struggle struggle a bit. Well, let's go over to deck two and then we can compare it. Unless Roy, do you have anything to add about this one? Okay. Our next deck is Cerebro Five. Um this deck's win rate is stupid. It is, I mean, look, it's a um, Ms. Marvel Cerebro deck, right? Like, it runs Ms. Marvel, Doom, and Cerebro, and then says, look, look at all the power that's on the board. Um, Wave is now a 5, Spider-Man is a 5, Enchantress is a 5, so you can screw up your opponent and not yourself sometimes. Lizard um, is fantastic here, Medusa. Like, it's just, it's a really, really powerful deck that puts a crap ton of points on the board. Um, As we talk about this, we're going to be comparing this to Bounce and which is better. So, Den, Bounce or Cerebro 5? Overall, Bounce in the current meta, Cerebro 5. Ooh. Also, I know I ask the question every single time, but which universe are we in? The one where everyone plays perfectly or the one for the average player? So, somewhere between the two. Um, Then Bounce is You should be making infinite. You should be making infinite? You should be making infinite and not, like, rank 30,000, right? Oh. Like, a good infinite player. Not, like, top 1,000 necessarily, but, like, you know, top 10,000, 15,000. I'm pretty sure top 2,000 can't play bounce good enough to be considered top 10. Yeah, I I mean... I'm top 1,000, and I don't think I can play bounce good enough. Oh, really? Like, because I chill at 10,000, I, like, never lose with the bounce deck. (laughs) I stopped playing it because it felt unfair. As long as I saw the pieces, it felt unfair. Uh, but yeah, I'm, I don't. I like see. I like bounce better than this. Like I think. Yeah, bounce me too. I, I like bounce much better. Okay, not like I think it, bounce it depends is better for who. Because I do, every I do time think bounce I'm is including. I do think bounce is better. I think this is easier to pilot. So I think for your average player, Cerebro Five is better. I also hate Cerebro just as a whole, but. I did play some of this today, and it it actually worked really well, and I kind of like it. I I kept beating this with Loki. Like, five is just enough power that I didn't feel bad getting their cards, even if theirs had two more power. 
think it's a little scary that the fall version has an enchantress built in. I know that that's like set as like, you've kind of got to have enchantress with all of the Miss Marvel around here, but there's a lot of good hits and you don't want a Loki player, you know, getting your enchantress off you. Uh, if, but I think this deck is super cool. I don't own silk, so I, I can't play it, but I definitely, when I saw this floating around, I was definitely interested in playing it. So, so also one of my least favorite things in general is silk in Ms. Marvel decks. I've seen it a lot in various versions of it. And like, I've beaten that a lot just because I'm like, all right, so I'm just going to make sure silk ends up in that lane. They'll still have five power there. Right. But then it's just, it's annoying to them. Yeah, I think you're it's important when you're playing play this, in. you have to play your two drops middle lane so that your silk yeah. doesn't bounce under there. I don't know. I, I think I'm down for this below bounce. Let's all, I mean, I guess vote. Um, I think this is below bounce. I have it well below bounce. Okay. De- yeah, I'll, I'll follow uh, preface this. Den knows way more than I do, so I'm the the fun guy here. <laughs> I mean, we all. I mean, play. I'm I'm heavily biased because every time I include bounce in a tier list, and I love bounce. Like they I think it's it. <laughs> no, it's well. First, sometimes they nerf it, and then I always have a comment of bounce is absolutely trash. Why is it in the tier list? Um, so look, and, I mean, dude, today I got like four comments demanding, and I'm not trying to be a jerk. Like four comments no. wanting to know why Odin was in Sand Ramp. Uh, and because like, it reactivates Dr. I, Doom. I, it, because it reactivates Doom, because you can use it with Wave now, because you can use it with Alioth now, right? Like, these are, like, this should be, like, fairly self-explanatory, I think, I thought. So I didn't, like, explain Odin. I was like, and then you Odin. And, like, it's, and then just I sort of moved on, because, like, and then you Odin seems obvious to me, right? But, like, sure, some people aren't going to get some things. I don't think that, like, like, people not getting things is a reason to not correlate with reality. Yeah, I, to- I totally agree with this. It's just sometimes I've it's it's hard to know like who we should uh, tailor to. It's something I have a lot of trouble with, like, knowing that. who we should tailor to. This well, is I why make, I ask pretty much every time I'm here. That's fair. I make content to make myself happy mostly, like oh. to try and be true to like what I think I see as the truth, and then I'll like try and verbally note when I don't think that goes with other people's stuff. I thought you created this. Yeah, podcast it's probably hard to recommend. Oh, sorry. <laughs> Good. Uh, Loki is the best deck in the game. I think we can all agree. But I wouldn't recommend Loki to most players. Yeah, I I mean, Loki's spoiler, I'm pretty sure he's up number one again. All right. Uh, the be- the game, the deck with the single best matchup against Loki in all of Marvel Snap, I think, is Discard. So our next deck is Discard Dracula. Discard Dracula is a cool deck that is way too predictable. Like, they need to find a, they need to find a wrinkle in this archetype. If they find it, it's going to be so good. But, like, the only way you're really going to rack up cubes with this deck is if you snap turn one or turn two, and then sometimes you're just getting countered because there's a ton of anti-ongoing cards right now, and you have to play Mobius, and you have to snap when you actually get Mobius. Uh, But otherwise, like, Discord Dracula is such a cool deck. I never want it to disappear. Like, I think it's a great deck to have in a game. Yeti? Yeah, I think it's a... I don't think it's in the top 10. I think it's like a good, solid Not deck. in the top 10? No, I don't have it in the top 10. Wow. So, um, okay. It's third of the three we have. Uh, I put it ahead of Cerebro 5. I think. Maybe I just haven't played enough of it, but I did like Cerebro 5 a lot, and then I, I just feel like Dracula, this card is just too telegraphed. Maybe it's just yeah, my key rate with that's this. a little low. But sometimes Telegraph isn't bad. Like, I think the meta is okay for Telegraph. Um. Okay, so this is the stock version. I think the best version right now runs Echo. Oh. And just slams that mid and just says, okay, now I don't have to deal with that bullshit. And moves on with life. Love the um, idea. I would have had this much lower had I not watched uh, Elite Hasa play that yesterday um, to the top eight of um, Fiona's tournament. And, like, he ended up losing to Johnson just because Johnson's a monster. Like, I'm not sure Johnson's entirely, like, human at snap. He might be, like, 
one of the five best players I've seen play. And like he still lost like in a two cube to two cube game. I just I I don't know if this is better than Cerebro Five. I don't have it ahead of Bounce. I think Bounce beats this. I mean, I think if we're playing in a world where the pilots are really, really good, Bounce probably beats a lot of decks. So I think I don't think it's that hard for Bounce to beat this because like Dracula is sitting on the board and then you're just like, okay, so I'm not going to play my Dark Hawk and I'll make sure my werewolf doesn't end up there. And then you're relatively safe. Yeah. Right? Like you just like, okay, so I don't know what I choose between this and Cerebro 5, honest to God. I think this deck's better than Cerebro 5. I just think it's consistent and its game plan is accessible to a variety of people. And I do think um, uh, Dakin is a a huge um, upgrade for this deck because it gives you an additional like big body that isn't an ongoing that you can sort of like force plays where your opponent has to respond to your Mobius, but you can play Dakin on four or a variety of things to sort of like give a nice big medium sized threat that uh, can put pressure on your opponent if they have to uh, respond to an early Mobius. So I think that this deck's in a really good spot right now. So it's definitely to me is better than Cerebro five. Okay. I'm ready to run for that. Everybody good. Apparently I need to play more discard. Yeah, I I think it's really good right now. Um, All right. Electro Ramp, but this is the Galactus version. We're going to do a non-Galactus version later. I cannot consider them the same deck. I know they're like 80% the same cards, but Galactus fundamentally changes every deck he's in. I This is basically just your standard Electro Ramp, except it runs Daredevil because it has Galactus, and then it also runs Galactus because it has Galactus. Um, And it can't cut America. A lot of them have been cutting America lately, which I don't quite get, but like if you're running no. Galactus, you cannot cut America. Um. I think this is the worst deck we've talked about. Yeah. I think this is the worst deck we've talked about so far. Yes. But it's the best Electro Ramp. Yeah. I can see that. Spoiler about what's going to happen when we're talking about the other one. All right. We're all fine. Do we need to really beat this one to death? Or Roy, are you sad Galactus is going to be sad? Nope. Not sad at all. Hella Lockjaw. I'm bad at this version of the deck. Do either of you have anything to say? I'm terrible with this deck. Yeah. I'm terrible at most Hella decks, to be completely honest with you. Dan? I usually have a lot of fun playing Hella, and I really think this deck isn't bad, but the like there's just too much going on in the meta right now to I mean consider it. Like every ongoing deck that you're gonna face, you're gonna be scared to death that they play Cosmo. Mm-hmm. And every time you see Cosmo, you're like, "Oh, should I retreat?" And mm-hmm. you you ca- you can't play a deck where every time your opponent snap, your like your immediate thought is, "Oh, should I leave?" That's just not how the game works. All right. So worst deck so far. Yeah. Okay. Yep. Let's get to Hella Tribunal. I know what you just said about Cosmo. I think this deck is really good anyway. Are we ranking this on like Conquest or Ladder or just a hybrid of both? So it's sort of a hybrid of both, which is annoying, but I don't want to do this twice a month. Yeah, <laughs> so fair. we have yeah, to we're just, we're just ranking them. Yeah. Like. So I think that this deck is significantly better than the other. This is for people not looking at the deck. I mean, Hella Tribunal, you should know by now, but it's Invisible Woman, Modoc into Hella, or um, Invisible Woman, Magic into Iron Man, Onslaught Tribunal, which is now a play, by the way, that is in danger from Enchantress, but in no danger from Shang-Chi. I think this deck is really good. I don't know how high I'm willing to put it, but I think this deck is really good. I hate this deck with a passion. Like it's but bad or like you don't like it? Both. Like, I think it's really good. I don't understand why people want to play it. I don't understand why people play it. I I just look at it and like it's so easy to counter whenever you play Cosmo or Alioth or 
whenever you have something to remove, like, uh, how do you call it, Invisible Woman. I don't know. I've never liked the deck. I've never had a problem when it was popular or not popular. It's just... I don't think this deck ever has potential to be, like, the best deck in the game or anything like that. I think if, it's one of those decks that, like, floats in the, like, Tier 2 to Tier 3. But I mean, if this is the best deck of your game, your game is a, a problem. Yeah. <laughs> I think it was the single easiest thing to win Infinite Conquest with last season. Uh, really? I think, like, in Infinite Conquest last season, it was, like, the easiest wins. If they just didn't have a counter, what did they do? Yeah, I agree with this, but... Fair. All right, so... It's better than Heloloctra, I think. Is it better than Galactus? I would say it's probably. better than Galactus. Okay. Yeah, it's probably better than Galactus. Is it better than Cerebro 5? No. Cool, we got a spot for it. Oh, I clicked on the wrong thing. All right. I mean, it Next has the ability have... to be like more powerful, but I don't think consistently it's better. I agree. I like the deck a lot, though. I like I like feel almost opposite to it uh, than when I don't want to think and I need to like play six costs. I keep it built so I can just be like, "Ooh, look! I played some six costs and won okay. some cubes." Positive, yay! Makes sense. All right. Uh, next up is junk, and like doing this a week before Annihilus comes out is weird, right? Because like this is a totally new archetype in a week. Yeah, and also like I have to be annoying, but. Oh my god, the list of junk that are going around the community are so incredibly bad. <laughs> like, it's incredible how bad these lists are. So, like, these lists are like you type junk in a builder and you hope the game looked at you and, like, hey, this is how you play it. There are so many problems. <laughs> so, this junk deck is not even top 20. I mean, I have an explanation, and my explanation um, sort of comes from safety. Safety often says the player, and he's on the like beta server, right? The player he's most frustrated to see often is Dara, and Dara's kind of broken at card games. And so, like, Dara plays this, and you're just like, What? How did you know I was going to do that? And then you lose, right? But most people play this, and they're like, Oh, I didn't know he was going to do that. I lost. And that difference in experience is, I think, the uh, the what makes this good or bad. Well, yes, but at the same time, what makes junk good or bad is also the way you build it. Mm. I absolutely hate the way this one is built. Because, like, first, I don't understand why there's no Chavez in the junk deck. You're never going to win on turn six. Like, turn six with junk barely ever matters. Your goal is to make your opponent retreat or hope they're dumb and they stay in the game that they had lost anyway. So you should just play Chavez because junk is the archetype that says, I want to play five turns, and by the end of the fifth turn, I want you to want to leave the game and uninstall it. Does Annihilus change that? I can see Annihilus changing that. Mm, I think no, it's more interesting to talk about Annihilus. Because if I play Annihilus, I play it on turn 5 most of the time, and so you're going to retreat by the end of turn 5. I'm okay. afraid of, of Junk getting more and more pieces. I think it's not an archetype that they need to feed. Yep. They th people think Eliath and like Old Leader wasn't fun. You know, imagine getting your side of the board flooded, can't play any cards for turn five and six. Like it's just I, I don't so, like it as an archetype and I don't think they should give it more pieces. I really like it as a satellite, like as a as a unpopular archetype. I think it does a great mm -hmm. job there. But yeah, I agree with uh with Yeti. Like if junk was D deck in the metagame, a lot of people would be pissed with Marvel Snap, I'm pretty sure. Yeah. I'm I think Annihilus might do that. I don't think so. So, I mean, just I the think idea... I, I think there's Destroy in the game, and if Chunk yes. pisses you off, just play Destroy. Okay. Until Kyra comes out, right? Yeah, that's what, January, February? Oh, no, wait. Ky you can still destroy their stuff with Kyra. Yeah, you're fine. Um, okay, you can still destroy your own stuff with Kyra. You can't just destroy opponent stuff, so you should be fine. Um, okay. Where does this rank so far? So the order so far is Darkhawk Bounce is 1, Discard is 2, Cerebro 5 is 3, Hella Tribunal is 4, Galactus is 5, and Hella Lactra is 6. Well, I think this is really good currently also because the rocks are really annoying to Miss Marvel, but we need to play 
Absorbing Man to send actually two rocks and kill Miss Marvel. Mm -hmm. Um, But I think, like, in a few days, probably, uh, Shuri is going to gain a lot of popularity because it's already being discussed as on the way back. And Shuri kind of eats junk because he needs, like, three spaces to win the game. So... I think right now we could make a case for top 10. I think in a few days he won't. Okay. So f- let's keep it below or above Galactus. I don't think it's as good as Hello Tribunal, even though it beats Hello Tribunal. Mm. I think it's above Galactus. Okay. Yeah, yeah it's that. probably better than Galactus. Is it better than Hello Tribunal and I'm wrong? I don't know. Well, I, 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 I want to say yes, but I don't. You know what? I don't think either is making the list. I'm going to put it above Hello yeah, Tribunal because <laughs> in the, in the interest of a week time. from now, right? Like, not to be totally blind to what's happening. Okay. Next up, we have our move Elsa. I don't know why I pulled one without Alioth. I was not paying enough attention, to be perfectly honest. Um, this is basically the, it runs Elsa, it fills a lane, it gets plus two power on things like Vision and Spider-Man and so on. And then it wins the game usually by playing Alioth. Uh, where does move Elsa rank? Is this still a deck? Because it was like number three last time we did this. Let's start with Yeti this time. He wasn't ready. He went, uh, oh. I, was, I, was, I was not ready. <laughs> um, I, I, I don't know if I really have an opinion on the deck. I, I haven't touched it since the Elsa nerf. I haven't seen it that often. I don't think it's as good. Let me bring up the list again. Hang on. Well, it's, it's another deck that doesn't want to see lockdown, and it's probably seeing a lot of it. Yeah, I, I don't have it uh, as high as a lot of the other decks. I think it's it's okay. It kind of does what it's trying to do, but I don't think it's uh, a top deck. I mean, at the very least, the numbers are saying Cerebro 5 is much better as a move deck than move is. Yeah, I think, I think I'd it's rather worse. play Cerebro 5. I think it's worse than Junk. Is that crazy? No. I mean, we're, we're really discussing, like, I think these are a lot of decks that depend a ton of them on the on the decks you're facing so Mm -hmm. if you're facing decks like if you're facing a lot of lockdown you don't want to play move but if you're facing a lot of shuri you don't want to play junk so i think it's very very meta dependent at this point so okay junk is good against loki and it's good against um some of the ongoing stuff and i don't think move elsa is good against either of those matchups I think it's like actively terrible against Loki. Uh, and like, yeah. so the difference is the Shuri match with this is better than against. I think I'm putting this below John. Sure. Yeah. All right. Next up. Ooh, I keep clicking here. All right. Classic Electro Ramp. Just one spot below Galactus Ramp and call it a day. Sure. I mean, mm-hmm. neither are actively like competing to be on the list anyway so yeah exactly we're so far down now all right surfer disruption um uh, this is bad right i agree. Uh, i like surfer, yeah, I, mean, but I don't think it i love the current decks in the meta so my problem is they gave Surfer this amazing tool of Werewolf that has amazing counter synergy with Surfer's previous second best card. Yeah, I was like, Surfer needs Brood. Yeah, and Surfer. Werewolf says, please don't play Brood. And so the deck is just like kind of trying to go in two directions at the same time with two directions actively pushing against each other. I'm going to say worst deck so far. This one, yes. But like you, you pull this from like an infinite... Yeah, Decks yeah. of the week article. It's it really it's, it had all the, the stops. Hi- it had the highest win rate. Like, look, it doesn't matter if it's this particular version. I think basically any surfer is just kidding. I think basically any surfer like is just fighting an uphill battle right now. Probably. Like, like surfer wants to like win on storm, right? And then they play him as Marvel and Doom, and you're like, well, shit, <laughs> like. All the tools don't really work. Although I guess a goose mid would be pretty damn good. Maybe I should look into goose mid. I've tried replacing storm with goose Mm -hmm. in lockdown, and it's surprisingly worked. 
I mean, Goose Mid just rocks yeah. the face off other players. We should we can explore that more after this podcast. You, sh- you should try it in the Darkhawk deck because then you Zabu and you don't care about it. Mm-hmm. And that means I'm running, uh, all right, whatever. I'll build that later because now I'm also running Ravona for the double hit on two that lets me Darkhawk. <laughs> okay. Sarah Control has so many good matchups except Loki. Yeah, I assume that's why Mobius is here. For the record, I'm not sure why it's Enchantress and not Rogue. Like, oh, I know. I, I know um, it's my name on those decks, but like these are mostly decks from like tier list and stuff like that. So I haven't built those myself, and it's just I'm realizing this now. Like we're not playing Zabu. Why isn't this Rogue? So because um, their middle lane is often like five good ongoings, and you don't want to hit the wrong one. Like one of the most common cards to play mid mm-hmm. right now, at least in my experience, is they'll play like a lizard in the middle and then they'll play their Ms. Marvel on that and when you're going 50-50 with Rogue it's really annoying like I don't okay. care I'll let them keep the 5 from Lizard I just need to turn off the other 2 lanes worth of 5 alright um, although this is a candidate deck for um, whatchamacallit like big time help me we just talked about it Goose like Goose oh, fits yeah. real well here right Goose would be really good in this deck. Uh, just I thought, for I thought you sorry. were looking for a deck. Sorry. Yeah, for people who don't know, this is um your standard Sarah control deck, except it's running Mysterio and Hit Monkey. That's like it. It's Sarah control. It's, it cut Shang for Enchantress, and then it runs Mysterio Hit Monkey. Yeah, hey, it um, seems to work. Yeah, I think this is like pretty damn good. Is I that think crazy? honestly, like it's much less popular than the other decks we discussed but out of all the ones that we talked already i'm pretty sure that's the one i would put top 10 oh i i don't think i'm that high good yeah i don't know about i mean it's pretty solid i'm thinking about it and i just haven't seen it in a long time what's Um, top 10 right now like what are the decks it needs to beat to be top 10 so the, we're assuming we have four, and I think we might be like cutting a couple of the things from other. So the top four right now are Darkhawk Bounce. I don't think it's better than Darkhawk Bounce. Discard and Boo, Cerebro Five and Junk. I think it's definitely better than Junk. Is it better than put Cerebro? It ahead. I would put it ahead of Cerebro Five. I think. Okay. I think Cerebro Five is good right now because. It has the Miss Marvel buff and everything, but I think it will do like it does in a lot of times, which is, but you just do what other decks are doing, put Cerebro in it, and then we just realize that it's fun because people like Cerebro, but there's another way to do exactly that with a better deck. Like Cerebro 5 amongst the Miss Marvel decks is like third or fourth. So the only reason we're playing Cerebro 5 is because we think Cerebro is fun. It's not because we want to play Miss Marvel and win with it. So, okay. Sarah Control is not better than Discard. No. Yeti? Agreed? Yeah, agreed. All right. So it is now number three of our list so far. I'm also deleting the bottom of this list because we don't care about like half of it anymore. So I have some space to work with. So give me one second. Uh, Yeti, fill space about Sarah. I... I think that I would rather play Cerebro 5 at the moment, but I don't think Cerebro 5 is like a better deck or has potential to go higher on the tier list at some point. But Sarah Control always has that uh, potential to hit top of tier 2 type of a range. I just think it's, it's rough at the moment with the current meta. So I like Cerebro 5 better, but I also haven't touched this deck for a while. So I also just think, like, I would change a few cards. I think Katie and Angela are kind of dead. But, like, I think if I run Goose, like, I've got a real base here. And I, if I run Goose, and I'm already running Luke, I'm pretty much running Bast. Right? Like, and just now I've got the Mysterio with Bast and the Bishop with Bast. And, like, I don't know. I think there's, I think there's enough here. Is that insane? I think you're going very well. Kitty and Angela and Elsa are not that bad. Yeah. They I give just... you stuff to play. That's the thing. Like this deck is just a waiting room until turn five, so you need to do stuff. Yeah, that's fair. 
I might run America Tech has in taken my a lot of hits recently. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I think this is look. This is basically tied with Cerebro Five for me. Goose is in this list in my head. Like in my head, I'm like, Goose would be really annoying for Cerebro Five. You imagining a little cat right now? Hmm. Repeat. Are you are you thinking about a little cat right now? Yeah, the little cat goes in here. Okay. All right. Thanos locked down. Um. <sighs> I keep seeing this. Is it still good? Am I like crazy that this is like way worse than it was like four days ago? I just keep beating it. I think it's still playable. I don't know if it's still good. I think yeah, have playable. you tried this? Um, I have always been a fan of Thanos, like control Me Thanos too. lockdown type stuff. And I always go back to it. So I think it's a solid deck. But if I'm trying to win, it's not it's not a deck that I'm picking. Exactly. Like Team Yeti on this one. It, it, exactly that. Yeah, forward. I have to be in the mood for it. Like, you know what? I want to lock down some stuff with Professor X and play some stones. And I know that this is a good go-to deck for that. Yeah. yeah. Like, when you have the quest, play 10 one costs. Sure. Yep. Thanos control all the way. You don't just play Kitty 10 times? All right. Um, <laughs> so... This isn't going to make our top 10, right? I can move on. It's top 10 in Yeah, fun. Thanos, Thanos, I think, is not top 10 material right now. Look, it's top like three in my heart, but what are you going to yeah. do? All right. The other five decks alphabetically. Destroy. Good stuff ongoing. Inshinaw. Lockdown. Loki. And Shuri. Because God forbid we ever do this list without Shuri. Let's take them one at a time. And just a reminder for people, for our listeners, we've got Darkhawk Bounce at number one so far. Discard at two. Sarah Control at three. Cerebro five at four. Junk at five. And move Elsa at six. So Can we're going to be comparing Destroy to... We'll start with comparing Destroy to, Dis, to Darkhawk Bounce. I mean, these are the six that we agree would be top six. So. Yeah, but I think Darkhawk might be better than a couple of them. I think Darkhawk is better than five of them. Ooh. So, there's that. Uh, however, he brought up the lockdown matchup issue with Darkhawk, so maybe, maybe better than four of them. So, I... This beats Darkhawk. Because, like, 10,000 one drops lose to Destroy. Yeah. But, like, Destroy is still inconsistent, right? Destroy is still inconsistent. And actually, like, I was really eager to see how we would perform in this metagame because for once, there wasn't any reason apart from it to play armor and stuff like that. Well, Shuri came back and they're playing armor, so that was already a problem. But actually, like the fact that a lot of people are playing Rogue and Enchantress, it's really annoying for Noel. Mm-hmm. So Destroy can never really catch a break. I'm really <sighs> sad for this deck. I think it's worse than Darkhawk Bounce right now. Yeah, in, in the universe where both players know how to play, yes. Okay. Is it better than Discard? It has to be, right? Yeah. Destroy is better than yeah. Discard right now. Okay. So that's where it lands right now. Every time we do this, we're like, we have six decks we agreed on, and then something new comes up like in the like two days before we... And, and we're like, never mind. The There's one more deck that should have been on that list all along. All right. Good card. Starcock. I actually have two lists of this. I'm going to go through both. The first is the Ms. Marvel ongoing one. Um... That's the one that, I mean, look, they're both Darkhawk decks, but this one runs Onslaught as its finisher. It's, it's running cards like Mr. Fantastic and Onslaught as ways to get that extra power across the board. It's also running Super Scroll. There's also the, um, which just came back and is like dominating in my experience. The Black Bolt Stature version is back of the Stature Darkhawk, which just now runs Ms. Marvel because, and also um, threw a Hulk Buster in, which I thought was a really cool tech piece as a way to dodge turning off your Ms. Marvel buff. 
Okay. So I don't care which of these. We're ranking the archetype. I just wanted to feature both because I think they're both really cool. I'm going to leave the cooler one up. Um, <laughs> so is this better than Bounce? I don't nope. think so. Is it better <laughs> Bounce is going to be like number two or three. All right. Is it better than Destroy? I don't even think so. Yeah, I don't think so. So I think it's better than Destroy. I think in the current metagame, it's not better than Destroy because at least Destroy isn't getting countered by everyone. Like, How is, is it better than countered? Destroy? In ge- Everyone's playing Rogue or Enchantress, and okay. the, the only way you're putting points with this deck is Darkhawk. Which gets Rogue and Enchantress, yeah. Yeah, okay. Is this better than Discard? Yes, right? <sighs> yes, because at least people don't leave when you snap. Okay, fine. <laughs> All right. Uh, I'm so this is not people leaving when I snap with Discord. Just let me have a cube one day. <laughs> Next up, in Sheenot. This is for our listeners the high the one high evolutionary representative of the day. It's the version that um runs magic, then plays Leech on five, skip six, and then drop She Hulk and either Hulk or Infinite. This deck got slightly better because She Hulk got slightly better. No, and this Mobius deck got, did nothing to curve it. This deck got much, much worse because Lockdown is everywhere. I, I didn't super care about Lockdown with this. Well, I, I did the tier list, and that deck got half the cube average he had last week. Really? Yeah, last week he was tier one. This week, like on large sample sizes, it was around like zero point two cube, cube average, which is his lowest of entire October month. Hmm. Teddy, what do you think of this one? I've always been a fan of this deck. Um, I don't think it's... I'm kind of scrambled on what decks we have here now. I should have typed it. but I got it. Where do you I don't want think to, it's like where five. Darkhawk Bounce is one. It's not better than Darkhawk Bounce, I assume we all agree. Uh, destroy is two. Is it better than Destroy? No. Both. Go. No. No? Then? Nah, behind it. Okay. Uh, good stuff ongoing is three. It's in there. It's in that conversation. Yeah. I have good stuff ongoing higher, but I'm open to being wrong. I have this right above ongoing. Okay, then but you gotta I think decide. I think they're close i don't know yeah they're close they're like yeah they're very close mm. put it i'll put it above i'm going i think okay all right oh i gotta write in g not sorry give me one second because that's not a word i can type without thinking about next up we have lockdown i think it's number one so far yep so yep. this is uh, the Ms. Marvel lockdown. Turns out Storm and Professor X with Ms. Marvel is freaking obnoxious. And yep, enough that you it. should probably just run a hard counter. I've already seen the whining begin for a Professor X nerf. Professor X oh, is both God. my favorite card in the game and my least favorite card in the game. It doesn't bother me. Professor X alone. I, nice I love he's playing bold. him, but I he's suffered enough. He has to take care of the X Men, and they don't even know how to pee alone. <laughs> <laughs> so this is number one, though. Either way, right? Yeah, currently it is. Mm-hmm. Um, this I will concede that bounces below this. I had it ranked above. The W version is like complete must play. Yeah. Uh, I like Nightcrawler in the deck over Mr. Fantastic, but sure, otherwise... But, but like that deck. W literally in the original post for the deck said, um, sometimes I run Nightcrawler over Mr. Fantastic. It depends on how I'm feeling. Yeah, I think Mr. Fantastic in this deck is... Uh, I'm not going to say useless, but generally the two power doesn't matter. So I think well, just, It's not really that it doesn't matter. It's really that you play the card when you have a bad hand. So if you're trying to build against this deck, just for the record... Uh, make sure you Enchantress on 5, not 6, because they're going to alley off you and you're not getting that Enchantress off on 6. Yeah, and they're going to prof X and you're not going to be able to play on that lane as well. Yeah, that's annoying. 
All right, this deck is good, is what I'm saying. Uh, I'll, I'll go with that deck is good. I think it's a fair assumption, yes. All right, next up is Loki Werewolf. Uh, that and first Lockdown version is number one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Look, 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 I want to actually talk about it because I want to like at least offer a perspective about it. But one second, we've got the Canvas version, which is running um, Werewolf, Green Goblin, and Beast. I've got a way higher win rate, even though most people don't, with the Lambi version, which is running like the full bounce package. Um, it is much better right now because Lockdown is really bad for Werewolf. So yes. And Elsa, yeah. But it also runs Werewolf. Like, the Elsa version, the Lamb, it just doesn't rely on Werewolf as much. Well, I mean, but, anyway, like, from the numbers, the the less Werewolf, the better. Hmm. For now. I mean, it'll change eventually. We'll find something to do about uh, I did not post the third version. For, for now, yes. So, Didn't I'm just going to say this. Windsor? Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is Lambie. Cams is this. But I didn't I, see Quinjet in the other one. Either. Oh, I must have. Dan, you don't have Quinjet. Quinjet's supposed to be here. Uh, it's supposed to be Quinjet over Mirage for anyone looking. Um, What have I done? You cut Quinjet from Mirage. Quinjet is like the point. Quinjet should I, be in this. I um, didn't cut it. I took the best performing list. Okay. Well, it's not my fault. I mean. <laughs> for, you got it the three days uh, people still thought Mobius might be good. Okay. Um. So, this is wild, and don't yell at me. Is there a chance lockdown is better than this right now? No. Nope. I'm going to start yelling at you. All right, fine. It's first. <laughs> also, <laughs> I I, I, no, I, I think there is a chance. Like, I'll, 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 I'll go to the end of the argument, which is Loki is much, much more difficult to play than lockdown. Mm-hmm. So... There are probably parts of the ladder where you should play Lockdown more than you should play Loki. But at the second you accept this, you should immediately go back to Loki and play Rogue in your deck. So, okay. Um, have either of you tried the Johnson list yet? Uh, no. Huh? So, the Johnson list is basically says, screw the bounce. And the werewolf, I believe, and instead like runs uh, um, oh my god, I can't think of it Helicarrier with Sif and Ghost Rider and it's one of the most fun decks I've ever played and like oh, Loki discard yeah, like it's just though that three card package in basically other regular Loki stuff and I don't know why, oh it also runs Fury just because at that point why the hell not um I haven't had more fun with a deck in months. It is so much fun. You need to try. Did you I just discover it? Because so, it exists since September. So the the Johnson Exact Brew exists since like like get has been getting played since like four or five days ago. Wait, let me check. Because Quinjet just came back. I mean, look, I'll read you the exact list. I have another tab here because I did it in a video today. It is ready. Quinjet and Snowguard are the only ones. Then Mirage, Collector, and Zabu. Colson, Lady Sif. Ghost Rider, Loki, Fury, America, and Helicarrier. Ah, no Dino. Okay. Yeah, no Dino. It's I I don't know. I keep winning with it. I'm winning like a bajillion games in a row with it all the time, and it's just wildly fun. And it's, like it's, it's really beating the pants off everything. I really liked to play Dino in that list back when I was playing it because um, it gives you a second Lady Sif target. If you don't have any carrier, you discard Dino, bring it back with Ghost Rider, and you're happy. Yeah, I mean, at that point, I just don't play Sif, right? Yeah, but where's the fun? <laughs> I mean, fine, but I keep winning. All right, either way, Loki's number one. We can move on from Loki number yeah. one, yeah? I will also say that uh, the Lambie series deck, I think, is better than KM Best for higher mm-hmm. level players. Yep, and then as Which, you go down, then the KM Best version is better, and as you keep going down, lockdown is probably the correct choice. There we go. I like that. Uh, the Lambi version, I think, probably just wants to run Quinjet though, just because there's not really a downside to doing so. Hmm. Like he's not running it, but I think he should just probably cut whatever the worst card is and run Quinjet because just Quinjet's so high. Um, I've seen a lot of people actually like ask the question. 
Is Quinjet still necessary in no. the deck? No, no, no. Okay. The, the Lambie one doesn't run it. Yeah, but then why do we say they should play it or it should be in it when most people agree, like, it's just an overkill card? So, in the hard matchups, it's really, really good. It's not useful for the matchups you're winning anyway, but against, like, Shuri Sauron, it can be backbreaking. You can last turn Red Skull Taskmaster, for example. Okay. Like, that kind of play is extremely strong. Um, again, in destroy matches, when you're, um, when your null costs four, right? Like, and you can do enough other things to, like, really win, it's very nice. There's enough, like, edge cases where I think it wins you some matches. And if you know enough of the matches, you know when to not play it. And it's just better to be a Loki target. I, I guess then it's, it depends, like, how one, like, sees Snap. Because mm-hmm. to me, that actually sounds like a problem. Because you're staying in games where you shouldn't, just because you think you have a like ten percent a ten percent out to actually like win the game. But like, if Shuri snaps you on turn two, are you gonna stay because there's Quinjet in your deck? So here's my actual argument. Ready? If you have Quinjet out, maybe. But um, because that's a turn two, right? And you already have Loki. But here's my actual argument. I think I for why I, why I think Loki already. is number one. Loki is so hard to snap against. Oh, I mean, I wasn't discussing Loki number one. Like, Loki's number one. No, no, but... no. But I mean, like, part of the reason that, like, you can do that with Quinjet is because it's so hard to snap against Loki in the first place. Oh. You understand what I mean? Like, I understand like, what you mean. But... You're playing against Loki, and, like, you know it's the best deck in the game, and you know it's got this, like, monster high roll potential, and you snap on turn two. Like, that's I'm... genuinely hard to do. I would have said yes, except we're talking like in the example it was Shuri, and if you're not snapping with Shuri and Red Skull and Taskmaster in your hand, why the hell are you playing the deck? Yes, but at that point you can stand. And now, like, like are you running Shang in your Loki deck? Right? Like, what do you like? And now you've got options. Oh, like it's just dangerous. It's just dangerous. I'll accept options. I like options. I'm like, all right. Uh, okay. So Shuri Sauron is in the top four. It's better than Destroy. Shuri Sauron is, to me, in the conversation with Loki and Lockdown. To me, like these three decks are a notch above the rest. And I can discuss like the different rankings. But to me, it's these three and then the rest currently. I think it's worse than Lockdown, but not by much. I could see Shuri third, yeah. I mean, but the question is like. Right now, I think it's worse because Lockdown still has kind of that I'm not sure how to play against it mm-hmm. effect, while Shuri has lost that effect, like, I don't know, in February, and yet it's still around. Uh, but I think down the line, probably in, like, two weeks, once Lockdown lost the surprise effect, maybe Shuri beats it. I can see that. I, I don't know if I agree, but I can see that. Um, I think I people I will also it. stop in two weeks, against Lockdown as I well. want Shuri to be gone. I don't want... To say Shuri is good I'm because so everybody tired else of Shuri. loves it. This... I, I haven't played Shuri in months. Um, I think I, Shuri I think might be due for a renaissance when people remember. Well, people are going to remember to put She Hulk in it soon, and then we're going to have another Shuri renaissance. I, I really think like it's good that Shuri exists in the game because there needs to be that gold standard of if you want to play for points, you need to be able to beat this many points, which I can put out kind of reliably, and it's extremely simple for me to do it. It's just, I just wish the deck that was that gold standard would change from time to time. So, but when this puts She-Hulk in, isn't this just better again? In Shuri? Yeah, you just, why is she, like, you go back to the Shuri past She-Hulk Taskmaster. I don't know, you're asking very, very difficult questions tonight. I think that we're a few weeks from that being completely busted again. I'm going to keep it in three for now. The questions are really good. It's just I was I really wish I knew that question like I don't know f- four days ago so I could test. I've, I've been really trying not tester. to say that anywhere because I don't want it to happen. Because you wanted to see my face when you would see it. <laughs> it's it's so terrifying. The second they rebuff She Hulk, I was like, oh great, it goes back in Shuri. And then like, I was like, ooh, no one else is saying that. I'm gonna shut up. <laughs> but oh it's God. been long enough. All right, I'm doing, doing two I have of those to tweet one deck per day, and I don't have that many <laughs> ideas, right? We have a top 10 friends. I do. I have a deck for every day. Um, I have so many decks. All right. We've got 
number one shock of all shocks for the third straight month since release, Loki. Number two, a new contender arrives. It is Lockdown. There seems to be like a deck like that every time. Last time it was Evo, right? Like there's always one of these. Oh, yeah, well, just... these are extremely like appreciated around the community, it seems. Mm-hmm. And they're not that hard to play. So as soon as someone finds it, he shares it. And you can be pretty sure that within like hours or maybe a few days, the deck is everywhere. Well, it was also W too. And like when W releases a deck, people look. All right. Number three is Shuri. Yeah. Because I mean, it, yeah. <sighs> we're talking about the best decks in the game. So I guess it's just in there. Like it just shows up like, hello, forget about me. And while we're here, I was on the Don't Call Me Shuri podcast, so check that out. Um, number four, Darkhawk Bounce, the sleeper of all sleepers, rocketing up the list. Yeah. Not bad. Look, I don't even know if you need the Darkhawk package. Spoiler. Um, I think there's other ways to get power. But this Although, is exactly where we were playing the deck for Darkhawk. Yeah. So Darkhawk is great, and the disruption is great, but like, Mysterio hit monkey still pretty freaking good. Okay. Um next up we got destroy in number five. Mm, That's yeah. the highest we've ever had destroy. Well, it's, it's not a bad metagame for it. It's, it's close to being really, really good. Really close. Next up we have Inshinot. Uh, beating Inshinaut with Loki remains way too easy. Yes. <laughs> Just snow guard win. And when Professor X is in every other deck, passing turn five is a little risky. Yeah. Just yeah. a little. Not too much, but kind of. Seven various versions of good stuff ongoing. I could see it's that rocketing because... up if we find the right build. It's funny because that sentence could actually be true. There's actually seven different <laughs> eventually we'll settle on one it'll be great uh back in so like we didn't do last month but this is important because glenn was on and i swear to god um go back and listen to the glenn episode we did the top five cards at each cost slot he nerfed like number one and two in every fucking thing we said really yeah <laughs> like almost all of our number one and twos got nerfed oh or like or the cards around them got nerfed i didn't notice yeah i did because i was like oh shit he, he, More no strip laser, no strip. It, it was, it was. We were all together. That wasn't me. That was just all of us together. As we talked about it, like, like Elsa was number one nerfed. Loki was number one nerfed. Like well, maybe that, not nerfed out of the number knew. ones. Look, that look. we knew. But then, like a lot of other cards were nerfed. Um. Okay. Next up, we've got. So we also <laughs> what I was getting at was with Glenn. We talked constantly about how Discard was in a really great place the month before and had completely fallen off a cliff. Well, it's back. Yay, Discard. Discard is a good deck. Discard is. I think it's part of the decks that I think are really important to have in a, in a game. Like, super high synergy. People love it. It's not that difficult. It has the problem of because it's not that difficult and high synergy. It's highly predictable. But, I mean, it's. I think it was my favorite deck when I started Marvel Snap. And I really like like having these kind of decks available. Like I think it's really important for players in general. Every so often I get in my head that I want to play discard and I play it and I win a lot and I'm miserable doing so and then I delete the deck. It's my I experience just hate with discard. discarding things. Me too. Yeah. Like, oh, I don't like I, the I play rain. it like once in every two weeks and I'm happy for an hour. And then I'm like, okay, that was enough discard. I don't want to lose that feeling and I'm gonna see if I keep playing. <laughs> Number nine is in a honest wild card. I did not expect to get there. Sarah Control also running Goose. Just so Let's you guys know, Sarah. it's running Goose now. Also running Goose, according <laughs> running to Goose. Goose. Laser. I, I'm convinced that this is like one of the secret tricks to the meta. It doesn't beat Loki, but like nothing beats Loki, so who cares? I'm just trying to win every other matchup. Shuri Red Skull hates it, right? Yep. Hates dealing with Goose. And, um,. If Shuri Red Skull hates dealing with Goose, then so does freaking um, Lockdown, right? Like, you just throw that mid. Like, that's two of our top three decks that Goose punches in the face. All right. Yeah, um, that's really good deck. 
And lastly, number 10 is holding on for dear life, Cerebro 5. I'm actually really really happy happy with this list. Yeah, I'm I'm very happy with Cerebro 5 being 10 because I think it deserves to be on it, but it didn't deserve to be high on it. So that's perfect placement. Good for you, Cerebro. (laughs) All right. All right. Final thoughts about the list from anyone. I think we're getting better each month. Mm-hmm. Maybe because we're learning how to compromise. Like we're getting like a, we're we're like a ranking couple. I don't know. Oh, I think it was because word, I was here. I agree. Actually. Maybe Yeti. It was actually, definitely because Yeti. That, that was, was what. A, that that was my next thing. Is like maybe we're just much better as a threesome, and Ooh. Yeti was the missing piece. Uh, <laughs> oh, Yeti is the missing link. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> All, All right. right. <laughs> All right, let's bring us home to our final segment of the evening, everyone's favorite segment, variant of the week. In honor of Peach Month, we have four separate Peach uh, variants here. We will start with Daredevil. Who picked this very beautiful Daredevil? Uh, I picked it. I love this Daredevil so much, I couldn't believe you didn't pick it, Roy. I specifically did not pick one until I heard from you because like it's so for anyone who hasn't seen it, it's like daredevil um, on a black background upside down with his like whip flailing around him. But it's just like, it's gorgeous and there's a white bottom to it. It's just, I want this variant very badly and I would like it to be in my shop now, please. Completely fair. It is gorgeous. Uh, We'll go with Thanos over here on the left. It was inevitable that somebody would pick this Thanos. Who was it? It's me. Like, look at it. Very beautiful. Oh my god! Like, so, I have nothing it else to say than I. Oh, um. So it's uh, Thanos holding, holding. I don't know exactly what it is. It's like a plasma ball with a little insect trying to eat it. Don't know, and then there's like Thanos's face mm-hmm. with half of it in the dark and half of it visible, and he looks very serious and very scary, and that's just how I envision Thanos most of the time. Very cool. All I right, think it's a very cool Thanos overall. Black yeah. Widow, that must be you, Yeti. Yeah, I will say I think this was like one of the harder artists to pick a favorite from because there's it definitely a was. lot of good ones. <laughs> Uh, so I picked the variant that had multiple characters on it. <laughs> I guess Jean I mean, Grey has multiple also, but... I picked the Jean Grey. Who's, I... who's on the Widow? Oh my god, Gleason. But... <laughs> yeah. We got, we're in audio format too, buddy. Well, who's got, on that Black Widow? Psylocke, <laughs> and Star-Lord, and Spider-Man, and Black Widow right in the middle. There you go. <laughs> All right. Well, I'm not going to describe each one of the characters just out of stubbornness here on this Jean Grey because it's not the characters. I just find something about the way she drew Jean's face to be like strangely haunting. Like it's like the it's like kind of how I would imagine if you encounter Jean Grey in real life. It's it like it's just very like Jean is like both beautiful and terrifying at the same time, which is kind of how I've always thought of Jean and. uh her hair is also awesome in this. So I don't know. There's just something about this Jean Grey that like, I've always found extremely compelling. Uh, yeah. All right. And the, characters, and the characters are Magneto, Captain Marvel, Captain America. And then I can't tell who the last one is. Yeah, who is that? Man in hood, man in hat. I don't know. Anyway, Ugh. we are bringing us to the very end of this episode. Uh, Den. My friend, yes. once again, where can our loyal listeners and loyal viewers find you on these here uh, internet tubes? Well, literally, the two links that are on the screen are perfect. <laughs> I usually post a deck every day on Twitter, which is mostly to advertise my next article, but I try to make it interesting. Um, and otherwise directly on marvel snap zone and if you speak french you can see me play marvel snap and sometimes other games um while i'm waking up which usually needs to me doing absolutely nonsense and trying to find a good excuse for it glazer we love den 
Mm-hmm. There's the country France, and then there's <laughs> Den, who's the best thing about the country France. T- to be fair, there's... I'm only half French, but I'll take it. <laughs> yeah, sure. There, okay, there's the continent Europe, and then there's Den. <laughs> nice. That's probably the best thing about continental Europe. Okay. Yeah, I, uh, I grew by like 20 times with just one sentence. That's there you go. Through. He is He's genuinely one of my favorite people. Like he is so fun and so smart. And what I'm actually going to sell you on for Den this time, because I'm pretty getting good at finding different things to compliment Den about. So like, <laughs> let's just feed that ego. But um, so I sent a couple of people that hang out in my corner of the discord to uh, Marvel Snap Zone Premium. And as a member of Marvel Snap Zone Premium, you get live coaching from Den. You'll see it like with no thumbnail, which frustrates me on uh, on this very YouTube channel I all the time. literally finished the session, uploaded, <laughs> send it to Terrence so he can put the monetization <laughs> no one stuff. The and... stupid thumbnail on it drives me crazy. I'm like, just make a thumbnail. All right, whatever. Um, as a way. person who is so, strongly opposed to thumbnails and despises them, I am all about that life, Dan. I, I, it warms my heart every time I'm uploading a Snap Judgments, and I'm like, oh yeah, Dan is avoided the thumbnail curse. One of the worst things the internet ever did, YouTube ever did to us, was cause people to have to have thumbnails for everything. And I just it warms my heart, man. Wait until Glazer actually comes to my YouTube. He's gonna go nuts. I have it's... one top nail, and I just change the number every day. And we're at so that I'm fine with. Just any thumbnail will do. All right. Either way, um, the people I sent to the coaching literally came back and were like, "Oh my god, I learned so much. Oh my god, that was amazing. Oh my god, oh my god, oh my god." So like, yeah. If you're like struggling to get infinite, or you're like barely getting infinite on the last week every season like plop down the i don't know 9.99 10 a month whatever it is for snap zone premium it's, it's not even a month most it, people uh, are paid like 50 bucks a year oh wow that's like nothing all right whatever either which way like it the coaching is like worth its weight in gold it's so good i watch the videos i keep being like i'm gonna jump on one and then like i never do because lord knows i have no memory um <laughs> I just have a little bit of content to make here and there, so I don't have all the free time in the world. But um, I watch every video. I like make sure I watch every video because they're so good. You will learn a ton. Agreed. The videos are really good. That brings us to our other excellent special guest, Yeti. All right, Yeti, if you want to remind our loyal listeners and loyal viewers where they can find you and what they would find if they went out and found you, they got in the tube and wrote it, straight to your location on these here internets what uh, uh would they find so my youtube's on screen uh we could find bundle breakdowns for i'm consistent with all the bundle breakdowns for marvel snaps so you'll see a video for each bundle and then on top of that i do deck videos and sometimes day one videos for for new cards i gotta get back on top of that and then if you go to the marvel snap zone youtube I'm supposed to have a weekly tier list video. Two of them, one for Conquest, one for Ladder. So I'll be getting back on that as well. And then Twitter, just look up Savage Yeti Gaming. There's not another one. TikTok, all that stuff. Yeah. All right. Instead of letting Glazer oh. say something here, I'm going to put Yeti on the spot. And tell, oh, no. uh, tell me, uh, Yeti, oops, all peaches. Smash or pass. Should I smash this this 3k gold or 300 and uh, excuse me 3500 gold button for That's the Deadpool, this right? dare this Deadpool mm-hmm. 3000 credits 1000 token and a avatar and some boosters variant. I don't know exactly if it's the worst bundle for gold this month but it's it's close if it's not the worst. So definitely pass on this one. That's ah, good. I don't even have 3,500 gold, so it's win for everyone. All right, Aaron, you want to say something Wait. about our longest serving and most frequent guest firmly putting boot in the rearview mirror at this point? Yeti. So I actually first want to ask Yeti one more thing for our listeners. Mm-hmm. Uh, what's the best way to spend money in Marvel Snap right now? But act like real money is buy the yeah. mm-hmm. gold from the shops where you can get buy one, get one free. If you haven't done that, that is by far the best way to spend your money. 
take that gold. This is one of the into... first time in Marvel Snap history I wanted to pay money for something. It's, mm -hmm. it's yeah. a really good deal. Uh, take that gold, put it into the sugar spice and everything nice bundle coming out next month. And if you want, there's like the Kai Loon something bundle coming out later on this month. He's a really cool artist. I met him in person. I have a yeah. print that's signed by him. Anyways, so that's the best way to spend your money right now. So, I mean, like, I shamelessly just steal Yeti's content. I plug him every time. When I do my bundle reviews in my page, I'm like, I don't know. Yeti totally said this is a bad deal. So, like, I'm not doing math, and this is totally a bad deal. Don't buy that. Thanks. Go check Yeti. But that's not, like, my favorite stuff. I really enjoy the tier list videos. Like, so I read Den's articles. I actually read the words in Den's articles. And, like, I know that that's just me. But I do. <laughs> Um, Thank you. just like a Thank list you. and then so but like my, my favorite thing is like because you don't repeat him at all like you instead just sort of like talk through the logic and like it's I love it like when we first started doing this I'm gonna blow you up for a second you were like I hate improving, and I know you're <laughs> improving on those videos I can feel it you've gotten so fucking good at it like so good at it. Like I love Thank those you. videos when they don't happen. I had to stop myself from like messaging you to ask because I can, I know you're busy, but like I miss them because like the, the interplay of like what I read from Den and then you like explaining them is phenomenal. Like I want more like just you explaining shit content in my life all the time. It makes me really happy. Well, thank you. I'm going to definitely get back on those. I need to. I mean, just do do some explaining shit content on your channel too. Just explain shit. Be like, hey, this is a hat. This is why I wear a hat. Do you like it? Like, explain it. It'll be great. I love listening to explain things. Thanks. All right. On that very pleasant note, I have the great pleasure of bringing this oh, episode to an end. Folks, just real quick, make sure you follow us on social media, which includes our Twitter which is at SnapJudgeCast, Twitter slash X. We are on the Marvel Snap Zone Discord, the best large Discord in all of Marvel Snap. Link to join is in the description of this episode below or in your friendly neighborhood pod catcher app. Our email is snapjudgments at, uh, excuse me, snapjudgmentspodcast at gmail.com. We're on Mastodon at snapjudgments with an E at tabletop.vip. And of course, last but not least, our YouTube is Snap Judgments Pod. All right, Den, thank you for joining us on our very special anniversary episode. We really appreciate you being on here this and every month that you Thanks join us. Thanks for having me every month. It's always a lot of fun. Awesome. I usually don't have a good reason to stay up, and I still do, so I'm really happy to have a good reason. <laughs> <laughs> well, we're happy to be that good reason. Just like we're happy to truly, again, watch Yeti lap like a marathon runner, co-worker of mine lapping me as I'm walking around the block. All right, at work, you've put Boot firmly in the sort of just casual guest column here, Yeti, with how often <laughs> you've been on the show. We greatly appreciate it each and every time you were on here, especially each and every time you're on here more than Bootman. <laughs> Thank you for having me again, and congratulations again on one year. That's kind of nuts. Really appreciate it. Really appreciate it. All right, Aaron, there's no one else who could have gotten me to do 52 of these but you, and I am glad to be here each and every week with you, my friend. Please have a great week. Peace and love, everybody. Aww. Love you, Roy. Love you too, Glazer. All right, friends, stay safe, make good choices, and keep on snap being.